chant the Brahma Viharas, the four sublime attitudes, every evening before the meditation. Just to remind ourselves of the attitudes we should bring to ourselves and to other people. Attitudes of goodwill, compassion, empathetic joy or appreciation, and equanimity. And you notice the chant starts with extending these attitudes to ourselves. One of the difficulties in learning how to master these attitudes is learning how to develop them at the right time, the right place. Because there are times when we have goodwill for ourselves and times when we don't. Compassion, empathetic joy, equanimity towards ourselves, and times when we don't. And it's not necessarily the case that we can easily master the question of when is the right time and when is the right place for each of these attitudes. And it's good to think of the meditation as an opportunity to learn that skill with the breath. Come to the breath with goodwill. May the breath be easeful. May you relate to it well. And what does it mean to relate to it well? On the one hand, you want to explore it, and on the other hand, you want to learn how to direct it. Explore its various ins and outs, long, short, deep, shallow, fast, slow, heavy, light. Explore the range of its possibilities. At the same time, learn to explore well, what does not body need in terms of the breath right now? What kind of breath would feel good? Make that your intention right now. That's the beginning of goodwill. Learning how to find pleasure in a harmless way and learning to explore the various resources you have right at hand. One of the themes in the teachings of the Forest of Chans is that all you need for awakening is right here. You have it. You've got the body, you've got the breath, you've got the mind thinking and aware. And it's really all you need. It's simply learning how to familiarize yourself with what you've got and the potentials of what you've got for the purpose of a happiness that's true, lasting, harmless, blameless. And so come to the breath with that attitude. You're here to learn its potentials and then see what, out of that wide range of potentials, is best for right now. And falling right in the wake of goodwill is compassion on the one hand and empathetic joy on the other. In other words, when things are not going well, you want them to go well. You want to explore to see what, what's going wrong. Why is the breath not comfortable? Why is the mind not settling down with the breath? You put in the effort to find out. That's an expression of compassion. When things are going well, you learn how to maintain it. On the one hand, that means not abandoning it, and on the other hand, it means not getting so excited that you, you ruin what you've got. This is an important skill in the meditation. When things are going well, how do you keep them going well? In terms of not abandoning, that means when you're having a meditation that's going well, don't stop. If you've, say, you've told yourself you're going to meditate for an hour, or the hour is up, and say, well, that's, the time, that's it for right now, we'll just stop right here. Well, no. Try to maintain that sense of ease and well-being. If you have chores to do, well, you get up and you try to maintain that sense of ease as you're doing your chores. John Fuhr once noted that if you're doing a chore around the monastery and you find that you've lost your meditation, stop. 
and be still for a while until you've got it back, and then continue. That's an expression of empathetic joy. You've got something that's going well, you don't want to abandon it. At the same time, when you find yourself suddenly settling into a state of mind that's more peaceful, more rapturous, more pleasant than anything you've noticed before, you find you will have a tendency to get excited, and that ruins it. So you want to develop the attitude when something good comes along, oh, there's this, too. And just because something seems good right at the beginning doesn't mean that it necessarily is good. So you want to watch it for a while, learn how to maintain it and watch it. And admittedly, it's going to be a difficult skill to master because it is so easy to get excited about something new in your meditation. When it finally comes along, you've been trying so hard for so long that when something seems to be a great breakthrough, you get excited. I'll just chalk that up to experience and remind yourself the next time this comes, you don't have to get excited about it. It's there. The potential is there for you to return to and just keep your cool. And maintain that attitude. Oh, there's this too. And then finally, you'll find that there are certain things in the breath that no matter what you do, you can't change. Certain pains in the body, certain difficulties in breathing, as in when you have a cold, or the simple fact that things are not going well and for some reason you just can't figure it out. We try to maintain an attitude of equanimity. In that last case, it means not getting upset, just keep plugging away developing the patience you need to stick with the problem. But if you find you really can't get anything to change, well, you learn how to accept that fact. There are pains in certain parts of the body, as John Lee once said. It's like going to a house where some of the floorboards are rotten. You don't lie down on the floorboards. If there are pains in your knees, pains in your hips, you don't make that the focus of your attention. You focus on the parts that are comfortable. You remind yourself, after all, those knees and those hips are not really yours. And you have the choice of whether you want to lay claim to the pain in those knees and hips. We well, just notice there is a pain in the same way that there is a heater over on the other side of the room, or cold outside, or whatever the condition is that you can't really change. Things you learn how to accept about the world. And you work with what you can change. In this way, the meditation is practice in these four attitudes, learning when which one is appropriate, and how to generate the appropriate one when you need it. It means learning how to develop the sensitivity to what you can change and what you can't change, and make the most of what you can. Because all too often we focus on the things we can't change, get upset about them, and all these other potentials that we could really benefit from just stay undeveloped. But as you meditate, this is where you move from beginner's mind to expert's mind. In beginner's mind there are a lot of potentials, but a lot of them are unrealized and you're totally unaware of them. Someone who's truly expert has learned how to find those potentials and explore them and develop a sense of which potential you want to work on, which potential you can leave alone, where the possibilities are and where the limitations are. And hopefully as you develop these skills in your meditation, as they apply to the mind here, dealing with the present moment, looking after its own well-being, and you can apply them to the situations around you. 
because a similar principle applies. You want to have goodwill for yourself and for everybody around you. If there are things you can do to help improve a situation, you work to improve it. When the situation is going well, you try to maintain it. You do your best to keep it going. When things you can't change, you learn how to accept that fact and work, to work around it. And when you develop this kind of sensitivity, you find that it really is for your own well-being and for the well-being of others. Because the basic principle in Buddhism is that, is that happiness is not an either-or proposition. It's not a zero-sum game. In other words, your happiness doesn't have to depend on other people's suffering. Or that in looking after your happiness, you're ignoring other people's happiness. Developing happiness through generosity, virtue, meditation is a way of developing happiness that spreads around. And the dividing line between your well-being and other people's well-being gets dissolved. So try to bring these attitudes to your meditation, develop them in your meditation, so you become more sensitive to which of the attitudes is appropriate at any one time and how you can actually generate that attitude when it's needed. And then realize that these skills are not limited to how you relate to the breath, they relate to how you deal with the people around you, deal with the situations around you. And that way they really do become Brahma-viharas. It's not just goodwill, not just compassion or empathetic joy or equanimity. To be a Brahma-vihara means unlimited. You're able to apply them to any case where they're appropriate at any time, to all beings. This is going to take work. Because these attitudes don't come to us more naturally than their opposites. The potential for skillful attitudes and unskillful attitudes is always there in the mind. It's heedfulness that helps you to grow the skillful ones. The realization that your choices are important. And that life is short. Our time here to meditate is short. Our time with one another is short. And so you want to be as careful and as vigilant and as discerning as possible. And how you learn how to get the most out of our short time here.